And the Lord put something really strange in my heart. Y'all going to work with me today just for a few minutes? And then we're going to stay in church. Don't y'all dare leave. Don't y'all leave because we got to do everything right. I want y'all to give your offering. Because we're trying to pay this church all the way on off. We're almost there. Give your tithes because you want to be blessed and you don't want to be cursed. Come on, somebody. We want you to do everything you're supposed to do. We want you to get down and hear the choir. And even some of y'all might get up and dance. Come on, somebody. Huh? Bishop's here. Woo, hallelujah. Y'all, I think y'all done got saved right here. Because pastor's ready to preach. Y'all don't hear me. And I'm not through yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our bishop. He's on his way to Israel. A lot of you don't know our bishop. Uh, He's late for the airport. Buddy. Late for the airport. Bishop Leroy Johnson. God bless you. Pray for me. Bishop came to bless the church. Look at your neighbor and say one thousand dollars. Hallelujah. How much do we own now? How much we own the church now? Four thousand five hundred and two dollars. Hallelujah. Pretty close. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. So take that too. So I think I, I'm still getting ready to go now. I still feel the Holy Ghost. Now, if y'all don't mind, we're going to go to John, the fifth chapter. Can y'all bear with me for a little while? Yes. The evangelist, I told him to go somewhere. I wanted to bring y'all's pastor back because your pastor missed you. But it looked like it looked like there's a fight going on on the inside. But like the pastor is trying to get some little spoon full of food and they give it to you but the evangelist is taking a spoon and come on trying to give you a whole plate of come on somebody hallelujah John the fifth chapter if you all well uh, just stand for a moment I'm going to read the rest of this, but well, maybe I'll just read it all while we're standing at the first verse. It said, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. That's it. And these, in these lay great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Yeah. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. And there troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. Thirty eight years sick with an infirmity. Oh, when Jesus saw him lie, he knew 
that he had been now a long time. In that case, he said unto him, look at your neighbor and say, Wilt thou, Wilt thou be, made be made whole? whole. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus answered him unto him, Rise, mm -hmm. take up your bed, yes. Yes. and walk. Yes. Yes. And immediately the man was made whole yes. and took up his bed and walked. On the same day was the Sabbath. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. Somebody shout, Lord, Lord have, your way. have your way. Lord, Lord feed me. Feed me. Lord, Lord, give me, give me the, word the word that I need. That I need. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sing your word, God. Now, I don't plan to be long because Pastor already done got started here. But, hallelujah, I looked at the thought, it said, after the feast, Jesus went into Jerusalem. And the first thought that I had, Brother Congo, there was a, a, a few Sundays back, we had some church in here, and my God, did we have some church. But when we got through having church, it looked like everybody decided we're going to go ahead and get out of here. But there was a few, quite a few that stayed behind. And when they stayed behind, it looked like that's when the Holy Ghost really broke loose. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it said, after the feast. Look at somebody say there was a feast. I don't hear nobody. And that was just something off the top there. But then it went on to say, Amen. It talked about this pool. Yes. Which was, was called the pool of Bethesda. And it said that even around that pool, mm -hmm. it laid a lot of impotent. Come on now. Halt. Withered. People that were, uh, were, were what we would call useless. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And y'all, I'm almost about ready to go already, so I'm going to try to take my time and be cool here. But I, I heard, amen, somebody even talking on the other day about one little preacher that went out and preached a word. And when he preached, come on, somebody, thinking that he hadn't done very much in his lifetime. But he turned around and he preached to one man. And that man was Billy Graham. And Billy Graham has won millions of souls over to Christ. And being that he's done that, come on, somebody, that was the seed that that man planted. So all of that fruit... Come on, somebody. Wouldn't have been here if it weren't for him. All right. Are y'all hearing me? Oh, Lord, I feel Go like ahead. preaching. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So then we get to this when it says they were impotent, they were blind, they were halt, they were withered, and they were all waiting for the moving of the water. Uh -huh. Because there was a time that an angel would come down from heaven. And what he would do, he would trouble the one. Uh -huh. And what that word trouble is interpreted to be, it means to stir it up. God will come and stir up things. Right. Come on somebody. He will trouble that water to where waves will come forth. Uh -huh. And what we have to do is be ready, able, and willing to get in the way. Come on now. Hallelujah. Man. We're not able to get in the wave when we're not right in the head. Come on, somebody. Right. We're not able to get in the wave when our heart ain't right. Uh -huh. When we're here, there. Come on, somebody. Everywhere. Hallelujah. Yes. But we have to have our mind set on Jesus. All right. Oh, I feel like Amen. preaching. Amen. So it said, 
that that angel would come and trouble the water. Mm -hmm. And whosoever was first to jump in. Mm -hmm. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. And see, because it has come to the fact now that we all can have God, sometimes we take him for granted. All right. All right. All right. When they were fighting to see who was going to get in there first. Come on, somebody. They was fighting to see who was going to be first in the prayer line. Mm -hmm. They were fighting to see who was going to get to that water first because they wanted to make sure that they got their blessing. Come on. Very true. But now we look and say, oh, y'all go ahead. I'll get mine. Mm -hmm. Because we think that God is always going to be there. But he declared unto us that he's not going to strive with us always. Yes. I don't hear nobody. Yes. So we must look at that point yes. that whenever the water is troubled, yes. mm -hmm. that we don't turn around and let everybody get in there first, but let's fight to get in the water. So when you're Hearing and feeling the presence of God moving through the place. Yeah. You don't look at what your neighbor's doing, but you get in the presence of God and give him the praise, the glory, the honor, the worship, what he is worthy of. Yeah. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Glory. So, there was a certain man there. And this is the pitiful thing right here. Mm -hmm. That Jesus locked his eyes on. And the man was there for 38 years. 38 years. Couldn't do anything. I don't hear nobody. Hallelujah. 38 years. And what he did. Brother Roman, I know you don't mind getting dirty. I hope you don't. But waited by the pool, laid down, withered up. <laughs> Look at those socks. <laughs> and then the angel would come and stir up the water. And when they did, he wanted to reach his hand for it to get there, but people would step over him to get to the water. Come on, somebody. But Jesus locked his eyes on him. And when he did, come on somebody, he asked him, will you be healed? Will you be made whole? Will you be full? Will you be restored to a fully functioning man? Come on now. And the brother looked wondering. He said, now listen, you got to understand that every time the water's troubled, every time the angel comes down, People just step over me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> How many of you know that people will step over you? Yes, they will. Yes, they will. People will step over you. They will walk on you. They will do anything to get ahead. Yeah. Yes, they will. Oh, my God. Why am I here right now? Go ahead. Go ahead. My God. But Jesus asked him, will you be made whole? So therefore, that man looked and he said, well, maybe this man knows something that I don't. Woo. Ooh, hallelujah. And I think something on the inside of him perceived, hallelujah, that this was the man that got the water stirred up. So he turned around and said, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Man couldn't walk for 38 years of his life. Hallelujah. But Jesus brought healing in an instant. Work your faith, Work your faith. Work your faith. Oh, I feel like preaching. So if I take for a moment, oh God, I feel like preaching. A subject. Look at your name and say, get rid, get rid. of that bed. Of that bed. Get rid of that. Hallelujah. I think we're going to go somewhere with this one. 
Now what you got to understand is what a bed is. Now a bed, let's make it plain. A piece of furniture upon which or within a person sleeps and slumbers. Where a person will go to get rest. A bed is also a place in which people will lay and stay when they are not well. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Ooh, are y'all hearing me today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm going to stick with those two for a moment. But when you look at this, I remember when, oh, y'all, I come from the streets. Let me, let me just tell y'all about me a little bit. Can I tell y'all? I used to go down to the county jail and to the city jail. Y'all don't hear me. And when I went to the city jail, the city jail, some of you men probably come from where I come from, too. When you went to that old city jail, come on now, the one down there on Court Street, amen, when you go down there, it was nothing but a fence that you were laying on. That's all. Y'all huh? remember that? It wasn't no bed. It was a fence. And that was the bed you were in overnight. <laughs> and if you had a bad back, I'm sorry for you. Because it was going to be a lot worse when you got up in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> you had fence marks on your face. Ain't that right, Brother Cliff? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Brother Mark? Sleep on the bottom. Oh, I hear you. We ain't even got there yet. <laughs> That's another story. So we was in that bed and that bed that we were in. It made us want to get up and get out of there. Because don't nobody want to sleep on something hard. Don't nobody want to sleep on something that's going to mess them up. Don't nobody want to rest on something that's going to be so uncomfortable. Oh, come on, somebody. That, 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 but what we want to do, we want to have some comfort. Yeah. So now what people are doing, they are making beds. Oh, my God. And when they're making these beds, Brother Congo, they're making beds that's so comfortable till it don't make any sense. My wife and I, I, I can't even go to hotels and different things because the bed that I bought, come on now, it, it, it's, it's no bed like it. I don't hear nobody. And, and when I go to a hotel, I get up out of that bed, my back is hurting. Mm -hmm. And I turned around, Sister Carmen came over one day, and, and I don't know what was going on. My wife just and I, we were cooking and whatnot. What'd you say? I just worked overnight. Just worked overnight. And then my wife said, you can go up there and lay in my bed. And Sister Carmen didn't want to get up. No, you get up and you get out of here. <laughs> I don't hear nobody. And all she talked about when she came down, that mm, bed is... Mm. <laughs> yes. So now they're making beds to where they're comfortable. They even got something now that they have made called a gel memory foam. You're going somewhere, sir. So that when you lay in that bed, your body imprints in it and it forms to your body and it makes it to where, come on somebody, it makes you feel as if you're laying on a cloud. You're going somewhere. You're going somewhere. Yes, it does. And although this bed is a piece of furniture upon which a person sleeps, come on somebody, rest, or, or, or within they lay when they're not well, come on somebody, a bed yet represents other things. Yes, sir. It represents y'all ain't gonna like me today. It represents a place where people are comfortable doing nothing. My God. Help us. Come on. It represents a place, come on, somebody, where things go on that's not right. Uh oh, come on. That's true. A bed is a place where trouble is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if we're making jail 
memory foams, amen, so we can go lay in. What we are doing is trying our best to be able to get comfortable while we are being in a mess. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my. What a word. Wow. Work your case. Nobody's hearing me today. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. Woo. See, when we was in the mess, over at the old city jail, come on somebody, we wanted to get up and get out. Uh -huh. But oh, if they had a jail memory foam bed in the jail, I could have stayed there for a little while longer. My God. My God. I don't hear nobody. Yes, That's good they didn't have. But in this day and age, when in past times, they used to try to make you feel uncomfortable doing garbage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Used to try to make you feel uncomfortable doing mess. My love. Come on now. Oh, my God. I didn't care if you was in church, out there doing whatever. I don't care where you was at. They made you feel uncomfortable when you dress like a hoochie mama. Yes. <laughs> Come on now. You helped us somebody. But but right now, people are comfortable doing anything. Oh my God. Somebody said say it again. Right now, people are comfortable doing anything. Yeah. Hallelujah. No shame whatsoever. Right. Amen. Even when I was out in the world, I was a knucklehead, but I had respect for the men of God. Yes, yes. Amen. I'm walking down the street, got my cigarette in my hand. Come on now. Chill it. No, sir. No, sir. No. You all right there. You all right. Pastor pulled up beside me. Hey, is that Sister Cameron's boy? Grip that cigarette, burnt my hand. <laughs> I don't hear nobody. Yeah. Because I had respect for him. That's right. That's right. That's right. But right now, you got people with these homosexual spirits uh -oh. that will, oh my God, shake their behind in front of the church doing any old doggone thing. You got, oh, help me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And they are not ashamed to do whatever they want to do. And God wants us to be right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now I want y'all to understand we're not bashing anyone. At all. Because we're not bashing because we believe that God can save. He saved me from something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. He can save anybody. 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 Everybody has messed up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's why people don't like these holiness churches because when they get to talking, they get to calling out some stuff. I don't hear nobody. I just felt something in my Holy Ghost right there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, help me. I hate when I see. Let me hear and not see today. Come on, Jesus. Woo! Come on, give God some praise right there. So they want you to feel comfortable in your mess. And when I look at that, come on somebody, I, I, me, myself, I used to be one that could drink or smoke anybody up under the table. When they got through drinking and they got through smoking, they passed out. Elder Hart laid outside in the snow, in the cold. I get upset with them. You messing up my night. Now I got to come out here and drag you up. And if you throw them up on me, we got a problem. Get, get up in here. I don't hear nobody, but I used to drink my butt on the table, but when it come down to it, if I go out there and I take one little drink right now, yep. I probably would pass out somewhere and I'd be the one laid out in the snow. <laughs> Do you hear me? There's some things that you just can't go right back into. Come on, That's right. 
right, 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 right. But see, the devil has a plan just like that jail memory phone. Oh, yeah. I got it. To where he wants you to be able to get right back in and start right back where you was at. Even if you forget where you was at. The one that sinned with you, y'all, I am preaching today. The one that was in it with you, they're going to remember it so good. That they're going to remind you. Come on, somebody. They're going to tell you, oh my God, what you missed. They're going to tell you where you was at. They're going to tell you where you can pick up where you left off. My God. But what God told me to give to you today, told me to tell you that it's time to get rid of that bed. Oh my God. For it's time to wake up. Oh yes. Hallelujah. We preached that a little while ago. Somebody said, "Wake up, wake up." Woo! And brother Kenneth, sound the alarm. Hey, glory. I'm sounding some alarms right now. Trying to wake us up. Because God has blessed us. God has given to us. And what God has given, we cannot allow anything or anybody to take what God has given to us. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't want to go every week going back to try to take back what the devil has taken from me. Come on, somebody. But I want to take it one time. I've recovered ownership now. I'm going to keep what belongs to me. And I'm going to guard it with my Holy Ghost. Got up my spiritual discerning intents. So whenever the devil decides to come my way, my grandmother said I can see him coming from a mile away. I don't hear nobody. But it's time for us to take up our bed and walk. Come on, somebody. I stated it earlier that the just shall live by faith. Yes. We shall walk by faith. Yes. And not by Yes, I don't hear nobody. I hope y'all are catching this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right there. Because if we're walking by sight, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sister Carmen, that big pillow top, it'll catch my eye. Mm -hmm. But I'm supposed to be walking. I don't hear nobody. But when I stop and see that, Lord, help me. Make me want to chill out a little bit. I don't hear nobody. That's what it make me want to do. So it's a hindrance. It's something that's meant to slow me down. So we need to take up that bed. Take up that bed. Get rid of that bed. Yes, Lord. Are y'all catching this? This is some good preaching. Yes, sir. Now, this is what I call some good preaching. This is what I need right here. Yes. Stay right there, Pastor. Hallelujah. That bed represents a lot of that nastiness in your past. Yes. Yes. I've always taught Mother Lady that you can't miss a friend. That you never had. But once you've had a friend, come on now. See, if you never had a friend, you can desire a friend. You can say, I want to try that friend. I, 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 want, I want to to have a friend, but if you've had that friend, you can miss it. 
you're going to desire it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's something that's going to walk past that smell like that friend. That's going to remind you of that friend. That friend. It's going to be something. Come on, somebody. That you might eat. That's going to make you think about what that friend used to eat. Yes. It's going to be somebody that say something. Oh, it sounds just that's like that. my friend. Just like him. Yeah. And it's going to spark up some things that you didn't know you had anymore. Hallelujah. 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 But what we got to do is get rid of the bad. And what we got to do is the just shall live by faith and we walk by faith and not by sight. So it's going to take faith to pick up that bed. Oh, yes. Glory. Told you some different kind of beds, Sister Carmen. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of them, them hospital beds. Oh yeah. Oh my God. That's right. Them things ain't no joke. No. Hmm. Jesus. Praise God, they got wheels on them. Yes, we do. But some people that's laid up in them, they can't get down and get to the wheel. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's right. So it's gonna take that faith to lift them up. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people got some little twin size bed. I could move one of them by myself, Brother Congo. But then you got them big old king size beds. Some folks even got beds that got nerve to have poles everywhere. Come on now. To where you feel like you locked inside something. Amen. I ain't gonna tell y'all what Brother Killer called y'all. Amen. But all of these different types of things, but we are going to have to have the faith mm -hmm. to pick up those beds. Wow. Yes. Come on now. Oh, yes. Faith is what it's going to take to pick up those beds. Some of them things in our past have been strongholds. Some of them have been things that just don't want to let us go. But look at your neighbor and say, the devil the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. I feel like preaching right there. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. And to the point to where I don't care how attached it's been to you. I don't care what type of stronghold it is. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some faith. Oh, yes, it is. Right, Pastor. Hallelujah. Faith is going to give us the strength to get past it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are y'all catching this? Yes, sir. Faith is what's going to help us to get where we need to go. Because you can't do it by yourself. You can't use your natural hands. You can't use your natural body. Come on, somebody. But oh, the Bible declares that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. But somebody look at your neighbor and say, Mighty! Mighty! Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 
no battle. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but somebody look at your neighbor and say, Faith! 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 Faith. Faith is what's going to give us the strength to carry that bed. Somebody say yes. It might have been rooted and grounded in you, but it's time for you to take it up. Somebody said he had had that for 38 years of his life, and he was only 38 years old, so all of his life, all he knew was to be lame, and he was waiting on something or somebody else to stir up the water. But I want you to know that ain't nobody always going to stir it up for you. Sometimes you got to get it for yourself. Somebody say yes. You got to stir up your own gifts. You got to encourage your own self. You got to lay hands on yourself sometimes. You got to say yes for yourself. Can't nobody say yes for you. But you got to say it for yourself. Say yes. Now somebody shout say. Said in my name shall they cast out devils. Come on, somebody say that devil might have been my bed. Oh, in my name they shall drink any deadly thing and it shall not harm them. Somebody say that drink could have been my bed. Hallelujah. Somebody say yes, Lord. But we got the power. To change our situation. Somebody say yes. I don't hear nobody. I told you, I told you, I told you that I feel like preaching. Say yes, Lord. Hallelujah. But we got the power to speak to the mountain. And the mountain look real big. Somebody said, Lord. If you want to follow me, 
But when you walk, we got to understand that it is a motion in which we are going forward. Hallelujah to God. We're always in motion. One foot in front of the other. Hallelujah. It's a means of transportation. Say yes. When I didn't have no wheels, I had more and Joe. I don't hear nobody. Hallelujah. No matter how long it takes me, more and Joe is going to get me where I need to go. I don't need to lay down in that jail memory foam.
But it's time for us even to step outside the box. It's time for us to move forward. It's time for us to walk. Can I get an amen? What a word. I receive it, Lord. Hallelujah. I receive it. I receive and get your life back right with God. Yes, yes. You are ready for God to do everything that God wants to do with you. If that's you, I ask you to come forth. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. I want to be saved. Yes, Lord. I want to be right. Oh, yes. Is there anybody? Hallelujah to God. Come on, give God some praise, somebody. God is faithful. Anybody want to be restored back to God? I know I haven't walked right. I know I haven't talked right. There's been some things hindering me in my life. It's time for you to come. Hallelujah. It's time for you to come. The altar is a place for restoration. Altar is a place for healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on up here, Sister Sheree. He's working on you. He's working on you. I prayed for you after you left. And that was the interpretation that God gave me. God said he'd give you the word. You receive it. You take it. But it's things in your life that take the word right back from you. And you've been giving it up. The Lord said no more. He said no more. Oh 
Somebody said, and I wish they could sing this, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. Hallelujah. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. But we hear the word. And we know it's right. But the devil wants to take it every time. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Wants to take it from us. But the devil is alive. He's alive. I'm going give myself away. Come on. Now what God wants us to do is know we got to be saved all over again. 